Hey guys, I wanted to share something that I have found I'm really bad at and I don't know why I've been analyzing what what is going on in my mentality that is causing me to not see this or learn this and I think I've figured it out. So I wanted to share it with you just in case you also experience difficulty drawing the line between Christian love and being extremely vulnerable and laying your heart out there. I think we're mistaken when we think Christian love means completely just exposing your vulnerability, your heart, and just laying it out there for whoever. Christian love, I think, is pretty well unpacked in 1 Corinthians 13. It's loving to be patient and kind and not irritable, not be rude, not rejoice in wrongdoing, hope all things, believe all things, endure all things. Those are those are actions. And it is also a state of your heart. So I can be patient and kind and not irritable or rude with someone, even if they are unkind to me and I'm acting in love, right? Also, I can hope that they will come around. I can believe, pray for them to come around and I can endure even if they're not kind and bear their unkindness. But that doesn't mean that I have to be just my heart raw out there vulnerable and fully exposed, unprotected and unguarded. You can guard your heart and still be genuine. You can guard your heart and still remain soft and not be bitter or resentful. But for some reason, when I'm put in the position that I need to remember these things better and practice them, I immediately think wrong about what it means to show Christian love. And my mindset goes to just putting myself out there. So you guys know that I've been through a lot these last three years with friendships. Unfortunately, I still live in the same city and I'm going to run into people from time to time. It hasn't happened much thankfully, but it does happen sometimes. And there's a few people that I dread running into more than anybody else because they have done me so dirty. I don't want to see them. Not because I'm angry, not because I'm bitter, but because it is unbelievable. Like I just can't even believe it. So I don't want to see them. <laughs> I don't want to be put in the position where I have to see them. But I did sort of see somebody the other day and that's why I'm thinking about all this stuff because I picture in my mind what I need to say, what I need to do, how I need to act when I see them. And the reality is I am wrong that I need to be like, hey, how are you? Oh my goodness. How are your kids? Look how big they are. How's your husband? How's his job going? What are you up to these days? I don't need to do that. But in my brain, that's what kindness and love looks like instead of just smiling and saying hey I feel like that's not enough but it is you can do that with a soft heart you can do that and not have bitterness and resentment in your heart towards the person it is kind to do that but this person has already shot you down right I've already done everything in my power to reconcile, to make peace. I've pursued through phone calls, emails, text messages, requests to meet and talk, asking for forgiveness um, with some people saying, yes, I forgive you. Some people saying, no, I don't forgive you. And some people completely ignoring me, not responding at all. I've already been through all that and I have been shut down completely, door closed in my face, some people ignoring, some people saying straight out, we are not investing in your family anymore. We cannot associate with you anymore. So my answer is there. That's my answer. So now I know who I'm dealing with, right? They do not deserve my heart. Not because I hate them or I'm bitter or I'm resentful. They have shown their hearts. So now I can wisely <laughs> proceed and not entrust my heart to them. There's even a passage in John, I believe, where Jesus is standing before a crowd. He knows their hearts, and so he does not entrust himself to them. 
and that's Jesus. So there's wisdom and they can go hand in hand. I'm not being unloving if I don't go all out with my, hello, how are you? Oh my goodness, your kids are so big. But I'm also not being a fool. I don't want to be a fool. I want to be wise and not meet, not give my heart and expose my vulnerabilities to someone who has shown me who they are. And I don't know why this is so hard for me to separate, but maybe it's hard for you too. So as I analyzed myself and all these emotions that I face when I run into someone or see someone, I realize I have nothing to hide away from. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I have been the peace seeker and the one who's sought out reconciliation and to meet and talk and pursue them. So I should be able, and you, if you have been wronged by anyone or cut out by anyone and you have handled it in a God-honoring way, seeking peace, seeking restoration, seeking reconciliation, being um, open to converse, not having bitterness or resentment in your heart, having a clear conscience, love, and a soft, tender heart before the Lord towards the person and the situation, then if you cross paths with these people, you have nothing to run and hide or be ashamed of. Really, whoever's handled the situation in a way that is dishonoring to God is the one that feels the guilt and shame and the need to run and hide. And so you can have a clear conscience if you know you've done things right. Of course, examine, have you? Have you sought out peace and reconciliation? Have you sought out restoration? Do you have a soft heart? Do you have uh, bitterness or resentment festering in your heart towards this person? If so, there's some work to be done between you and the Lord. And if you need to fix anything with anyone, by all means, do it. Those are the things that scream Christian love. But if you've already done those things and the door is slammed in your face and the other person is unwilling, closed off, their heart exposed, and you see who you're dealing with, now it's time to just be cordial and not entrust yourself to them. And you're not wrong or unloving for not doing that. And that's the part that I need to remember. I'm not wrong or unloving to just smile and say hello if I run into someone who has let me know, I don't want you in my life. This must be part of one of the wrong things you pick up in American church culture, uh, the wrong mentality of what Christian love is, and then zoning in only on 1 Corinthians 13 and not remembering passages like Jesus, knowing their hearts did not entrust himself to them, Proverbs, where there's so much wisdom on how to conduct yourself in life and one of them is, do not answer a fool according to his folly. Jesus telling the, the apostles to be wise as serpents, but innocent as doves. That's where I think the blend is. That's where the, the right balance takes place. I'm as innocent as a dove by pursuing peace and reconciliation, apologizing, being vulnerable, loving, willing. And then you have to be wise as a serpent if the person is unwilling and hard-hearted and unkind in response so it's not just everything is love be kind and loving there's wisdom and it must be applied and maybe i'm naive in this i think i am maybe i am confused in this and need a constant reminder of vulnerability and overextending yourself and just laying your heart out to be trampled does not equal christian love um, battered wife kind of syndrome too. Like <laughs> you keep getting mistreated and you keep coming back. It's like, hello, wake up. I don't know if I would say that's still happening, but it was at one point for me and I'm sure we've all done it. We've all done it. And then of course, personality type. I'm a very devoted person and I'm not a quitter. I'm not, uh, someone that just walks away from challenges. I face them and deal with them head on. Uh, I value relationships immensely. 
I'm all in, my heart is fully invested, and love is not a small thing to me. So if I love someone, I will fight for them. And I just have to remember that not everyone thinks that way. And you have to be wise. And I think that my love and devotion sometimes blinds my wisdom and put, gets me into more pain and hurt. Um, so I am sure that there are others of you that feel this way. And I will say, of course, we all battle different things. This is my battle, but I'm like, why am I so bad at this? Why do I keep on confusing the love of a, a lo Christian love and being foolishly overly vulnerable with your heart? You might be on the other side where you tend to, you know, be like, I don't care about that person. They did me wrong. Forget them, which I would say that's sinful and wrong. So I might be foolish. I'm not necessarily sinning, but I'm being really dumb. <laughs> and I would say that's not Christian love at all. You have to have that balance of forgiveness and a pure heart before the Lord, a clear conscience before the Lord, not having bitterness, not having resentment, pursuing peace and reconciliation. And if the door is slammed in your face, then you walk away with a clear conscience because you've done what you can. You have nothing to be ashamed of before the Lord or man. You have nothing to hide from before the Lord or man. And all you can do is hope all things, believe all things, endure all things, and bear all things. And that's love. So I hope wherever you are on that spectrum, that the Lord speaks to you today through this video, that you seek wisdom, that you not get so caught up in only one biblical concept that you forget the rest, and that you remember that the Lord is the main one we want to please. I hope this is encouraging to you guys. It's good for me to be reminded of these things and really analyze these things and hash them out and remember them for next time because I will have a next time. God bless you guys and see you next time.